Welcome to the Board of Selectmen's presentation of the 2019 proposed Warren Articles. My name is Linda Murray. I'm chairman of the board, and to my right is Paul O'Brien and then Dave Bowers. And to my left is Vice Chair Dave Senecal and Brad Harriman. Before I start, before we start the presentation, I'd like to inform you of two very important dates. The first one is February 5th, um, 7.30, deliberative session at the Town Hall Great Hall. Next one is Election Day, March 12th, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. again at the Town Hall Great Hall. I'm going to start off by reading the first Warren article. Warren Article 11, Electrical Distribution Conversion Phase 2, New 12.47 kV Station and Distribution Conversion from 4 kV to 12.47 kV Forest Road and North Main Street to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $3,675,000 from the Electric Enterprise Fund for the purpose of constructing a new 12.47 kV station at the former substation number one site and converting the distribution system voltage from a 4 kV to a 12.4 kV on Forest Road Main Street and surrounding areas. Further, to authorize the issuance of $3,675,000 in bonds or notes for this project in, in accordance with RSA 33 Municipal Finance Act and to further authorize the Board of Selectmen to issue and negotiate rate, the rate of interest, maturity, and other terms for this purpose. This project shall be paid entirely by the surplus funds of the Electric Enterprise Fund and will not result in any increase to the tax rate or the electric rate. This appropriation, unless rescinded, shall not elapse until the fulfillment of the proposed purpose or completion of the project being financed pursuant to RSA 32-7-3. No impact to the tax rate recommended by the Board of Selectmen, 4 to 0, recommended by the Budget Committee, 7 to 0, and a three-fifths vote required. This project is the next phase in converting our town from 4 kV to 12.4 kV. And so now I'd like to turn it over to Barry Muccio, our Electric Department head, to give us the details. Thank you. Um, as Linda said, this is the fifth conversion projects which we started in 2003 and this is part of the ongoing conversion of all of the town's uh, electric system to 12 kV. In this photo I show in green the areas which will be converted. This is our North Main Street circuit and this is our Forest Road circuit. The red represents the 390 line which we are working currently on. Um, justification. Number one, this, this uh, original 4 kV substation was built in the mid-80s. It is a 4 kV substation. It currently feeds one-third of our customer base. There are very limited um, 4 kV portable substations out there to replace this if it ever went down, even in a case of emergency or repair. Um, and so if we ever had any issues here, we would be down for a considerable amount of time. It's just, it's a voltage that's being phased out in New England, and that's why 4 kV substations aren't available. It also um, is a restricting factor in our load growth in that North Wolfboro and Forest Road area. During the summer months, we really do see uh, some voltage issues um, based on the fact that it's 4 kV and it's heavily loaded. Out on the street in the distribution system, several of the pole structures are over 50 years old. As I said, there, there's a lack of uh, voltage performance out there when we have peak load, either in the summer or the winter. At the end of both of those circuits, we'll see that. Our regulators will be completely maxed out uh, in order to provide adequate voltage. These two circuits also don't have the capability to be tied together or switched in the event if we had an accident or anything else that failed on that. Uh, portion of the of the system in order to carry the load uh, of the other circuit. 
So our intent would be to uh, build a new substation at the old former substation number one site down at the Glendon Street parking lot. We have preserved this location um, all along knowing that we would someday build a new substation here. It does allow us to be closer to our load base of South Main Street of which this station here would feed and then we would alternate the load of that North Main Street area in the Forest Road to our other substation on Filter Bed Road. So that's a before photo. And this is an artist rendering uh, of what we're proposing to construct there. We have added some additional monies to, to uh, improve the fencing and also add some more mature uh, vegetative growth there to sort of buffer the aesthetic impact um, in that area in hopes that it will, uh, will, you know, will, will better fit that community as far as aesthetics. The, uh, the project out on the distribution section would involve constructing all brand new uh, spacer cable, much as what we did down on Sewell Road. This is the existing uh, spacer cable that is not actually spacer cable. It was run as that, but it's only 5 kV rated. We have all new transformers going up, insulators, um, and also whatever is out there in the single phase uh, taps in that area would be converted and reconstructed as well. This project will have no effect on the tax rate. It's currently built into the rate structure of the electric department and therefore it also will have uh, no effect on the existing electric rate. So these convergent projects have been built into our electric rate uh, since our last contract which commenced three years ago. Thank you and I hope for your support. Hi, I'll be presenting uh, Warren Article Number 12, the Pleasant Valley Road Bridge Construction. The article reads as follows. <clears throat> to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $1,240,000, of which 80%, dollars will be reimbursed by the New Hampshire Department of Transportation as a state aid bridge project for the purpose of engineering, permitting, and constructing the Pleasant Valley Road bridge replacement project over Heath Brook. The amount to be raised by general taxation requested herein is $248,000. The total project cost for this project is $1,380,000. $140,000 has been expended from 2016 appropriations for preliminary design and engineering for the project. This appropriation shall not lapse until the fulfillment of the purpose or completion of the project or at the end of the 2022 fiscal year, whichever occurs first. The estimated tax rate impact for 2019 is 12.5 cents per thousand dollars of assessed valuation. This is recommended by the Board of Selectmen by a vote of five to zero and recommended by the Budget Committee by a vote of seven to zero. Majority vote is required. The Pleasant Valley Road Bridge crosses the Heath Brook and is the only access to Camp Bernadette, multiple housing developments and, and other homes uh, down on Pleasant Valley Road. The bridge is currently on the state's red list for structural deficiencies. The town is very fortunate that the engineering and permitting have already been completed. This allowed us to move up from the 2024 um, schedule to 2019, 2019 in, in the state aid bridge program, which will fund 80% of the cost. I'd like to ask the voters to support this article, and I'll turn it over to Dave Ford for further explanation. Thank you, Chairman uh, Brad. I am uh, Dave Ford. I am your uh, Public Works Director. In, uh, in 2019, I'll be presenting nine different Warren articles uh, that go towards rebuilding and maintaining our infrastructure. All of them are very important and again we'll be going through these details. Uh, this first one, the Pleasant Valley Road project, is a, uh, a problem that we've had is it, it, the bridge has been on the, uh, the red list which means it's deficient. It's still uh, safe to travel but it is deficient and is going downhill. Uh, in 2016 um, uh, we appropriated money for the engineering aspects to, to do a detailed study. Um, we have done some temporary repairs, but the, again, the only solution is to replace the bridge. Uh, we have uh, did a request for qualifications and selected quantum consultants, a structural engineer who has done many of these bridges, and they've already done the design and will be working with us during the construction. Um, the plans and specifications are ready to go out to bid. Uh, the bridge itself, um, again, if people are familiar with Pleasant Valley Road, and as uh, Brad has said, we have many residences and uh, beyond this area and it's the only way to get is across Heathbrook is by this bridge 
Um, we are proposing to put in a temporary bridge. This will be a, it'll drop down and cross a bridge, and there'll be a couple of major culverts here and come back up. And that way we can expedite the construction of the bridge, and it also will mitigate the impacts on wetlands. These will be temporary impacts on wetlands, but by, uh, by doing the bypass uh, temporary bridge, we'll be able to get this done quicker and uh, with less impact on wetlands, and actually it'll cost less. Uh, the total uh, construction cost is $867,004. Uh, engineering and design, to date, we've already spent $136,773. Uh, we have done the additional permitting for wetland permitting. We have just received those, so we're in good shape there. And uh, in the bidding is in administration, we have got author authorization from DOT to go out to bid, so we are planning on going out to bid within the next month or so. Uh, we do have uh, some administrative fees, and during construction, we will have a full-time inspection uh, from the uh, quantum consultants, making sure everything gets uh, done properly. H however, with bridges and a lot of construction, right now we're very concerned about escalation and, and making sure we have contingency for things we don't know. Uh, so the engineer and the DOT has recommended we have a 15% contingency, and then we have a, a cost escalation in case there are delays, in case there's uh, increases in steel and concrete. So that brings the total project uh, to a rounded off number of $1,380,000. As we stated earlier, uh, we have already appropriated in, in 2016 $140,000, so that reduces the total amount to $1,240,000, which is what we're asking in the Warren article, of which, uh, because this is a state-funded project in which the state DOT will be paying 80%, our portion is only 20% of that, and what we're looking to this year would be $248,000. This project, again, is very important. Uh, we were, again, being proactive by having the design ready and uh, working with DOT. This is a great program. We are very uh, excited about this, and, and hopefully the voters will be also and support this project. Thank you. I'll also be presenting Article 13, Town Road Upgrades, and the article reads as follows. To see whether the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $800,000 for the purpose of upgrading town roads and drainage systems. It is intended as a two-year appropriation which will lapse on December 31st, 2020 or when the project is complete, whichever occurs first. The estimated tax rate impact for 2019 is uh, 40.5 cents per thousand of assessed valuation. This is recommended by the Board of Selectmen by a vote of 4 to 0, recommended by the Budget Committee by a vote of 6 to 1. A majority vote is required. Um, this is an annual Warren article to fund the upgrades to our road system. The Public Works Department has developed a long-term plan identifying the type of repairs each road needs, whether it's a shipment overlay, pavement reclamation, or a complete box-out reconstruction. Uh, I'd like to ask the voters to support this article, and I'll turn it over to Dave Ford for further details. Thank you, Brad. Um, yes, as you stated, this is an annual uh, appropriation in which we are trying to systematically rebuild our roads. Uh, in 2018, we had a lot of major road construction, and this year we're going to be looking at finishing those with pavement overlays. Um, as we know, we have over 67 miles of road, of which uh, 53 uh, and a half are paved. Uh, these, many of these were roads were built a long time ago and don't have adequate base or adequate drainage. Uh, so when we start talking about the road construction, it's, it's, there's a lot to it, and if, if people have seen what we've done, um, it replaces most of our culverts uh, that 20 or 30 years old need to get replaced. Um, we have to sometimes add additional drainage. We don't have standing water on the side of our roads, which is what causes the frost heaving and, and uh, makes the roads deteriorate quicker. Um, we also, certain roads that aren't in bad shape, we can do pavement overlays. And again, lately we've been doing a lot of reconstruction, but th that's also uh, things that we can do. Uh, again, drainage is the most critical, and we have been spending more money on that, but it does pay off, as we see, uh, with the roads lasting. In uh, 2019, what we are proposing to do is to finish off roads that were uh, basically rebuilt in 2018. So Key Waden Road, College Road, and Trotton Track Roads were all major rebuilds in 2018, where they had the drainage was installed and base pavement was installed. So in this year, we're going to come back and finish those off with uh, a nice finished pavement overlay, and we'll uh, shoulder the gravels and clean up. North Wolfboro Road is a project that was started uh, in late in the year. Uh, the weather came in on us quickly, and we're not able to complete it. Uh, we have ground up. We have installed a lot of the drainage, but when it came time to pave, uh, the road froze. As a result, uh, we had to delay. We are carrying some of that money over. However, this money here will complete it, and we'll complete it from Route 28 all the way up to Diamond Corner. 
Uh, the one new road that we are going to be working on in 2019 is Allen Road, and we do plan on doing a complete reclaim, grade, and uh, paving on that. That's a uh, rather short road, just under 1,600 feet. Um, two other projects, which were started with water lines. In 2018, we did the water mains on Pine Street and on Laney Street. These were sections uh, where we had still had some very old pipe from the 1890s. Uh, these water lines were replaced and the water department paid for that. Now we are now finishing the road, so we're going to uh, re remove the pavement, uh, put in base and three, uh, four inches of pavement, as well as re redo the curb. Uh, and additionally, on Pine Street, we are going to plan to rebuild the sidewalk all the way uh, on Pine Street. Uh, and then going forward, we are planning on doing more uh, bidding out of some of these big projects. Uh, as a result of this past year, with the uh, town crews doing a lot of uh, construction work, we did fall behind a little bit on maintenance. So uh, this year we're, we're going to back off. And one of the projects we have here is Bryant Road, which is a, a mile long road that has many issues, drainage, uh, needs wetland permits. Uh, so we are going to be doing engineering uh, this year so we can have a, a plan set to put that out to bid for 2020. Additionally, uh, High and Park Street, which is off Center Street uh, by Mass Landing, uh, those are two short roads that have both water and sewer and drainage problems. Uh, so we are funding that multiply with multiple funds uh, with the water is coming from the water department. Here we are uh, putting a certain amount of money for engineering. Uh, similarly, we'll have the plans and specs ready to go out to bid, and that will be in the 2020 budget for construction. Uh, another interesting thing we're doing this year, and, and we're going to see this sh uh, sh uh, show up on three different warrant articles. On Partridge Drive, we're going to be installing three stormwater best management practices. This is stormwater treatment. Uh, this is an area where we uh, uh, previously had uh, prepared plans uh, to reduce the amount of runoff that's running over the hill, uh, creating, runoff, uh, creating um, erosion and ending up in Winter Harbor. Uh, this past year we had a serious problem. We're going to talk about that a little later uh, in one of the Warren articles. But this is a specific um, plans that have been developed. We had applied for some grants. We did not get the grants. This year the selectman decided let's go ahead and put it in the roads because it will be in the right of way on Potter's Drive. Uh, we have three uh, significant stormwater systems going in, and again, uh, it's something that we're going to be incorporating all our designs going forward, especially any runoff that's close to the lake to mitigate the runoff and mitigate uh, negative impacts of that. And we carry a small contingency, and that gives us a total this year we're looking of $800,000. Again, in the past, you've been very supportive of that. We appreciate that, and hopefully this year you will, you will support it too. Thank you. Article 14. Article 14, operating budget. Shall the town raise and appropriate as an operating budget, not including appropriations by special warrant articles and other appropriations voted separately, the amount set forth in the budget posted with the warrant or as amended by the vote of the first session for the purpose of set forth therein totaling $27,893,891. Should this article be defeated, the operating budget shall be $26,856,570 which was the same as last year's operating budget, with certain adjustments required by the previous action of the town or by law, or the governing body may hold one special meeting in accordance with RSA 40, colon 13, comma X and XVI to take up the issue of a revised operating budget only. This uh, will have a tax impact of $5.88 per $1,000 of assessed valuation. Been recommended by the budget committee of a vote six to one. I encourage you to vote for this as it help the town move forward and all the things that have been already discussed. Thank you. My name is Dave Senecal, one of the selectmen. Article 15, Darkside Public Restroom Improvements. And it reads to so see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $150,000 to reconstruct and expand the public restrooms at Darkside Restaurant Facility to provide year-round Americans with Disabilities Act, ADA, accessible public restrooms at the Dockside facility. This appropriation is in addition to the 2018 appropriation, Article 17, which was $150,000, which has been legally encumbered for this project. Total appropriations of $300,000. This is a non-lapsing article, which will last until the project is complete, or until December 31st, 2024, whichever occurs first. Estimated tax impact for 
0 0.076 per thousand assessed value. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen on a vote of 5 to 0. Recommended by the Budget Committee by a vote of 5 to 2. Majority vote is necessary. I'll turn it over to David Ford to explain this article. Thank you, David. Um, this is a very important project. Um, as you may or may not be aware, um, down at Dockside, we have many visitors. Uh, the, uh, we have visitors from boats, from vehicles, on, on foot. Um, and the restroom facilities we have are just not large enough or, 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 uh, for something that's so important in the area. Um, right currently, it's only seasonal. We don't have any heat there, so we run it basically uh, from the spring into the fall. We have two existing restrooms, and they're both unisex. Uh, again, they're very heavily used, and uh, while we try to maintain the best we can, they really are worn out, and they do need to be upgraded. Here's a picture of what our life's building looks like, and we are trying to keep it uh, the same type of uh, uh, look on it. Um, our solution, when the Board of Selectmen did create a public restrooms committee, and they looked at different options, um, we came up with different alternatives, and uh, the best solution we came up with is supposed to have a, a dedicated woman's room with three water closets, a sink, hand dryer, and a baby changing station, and the men's room to have uh, two water closets, one urinal, a hand dryer, and baby changing station. And each of those uh, will have an ADA accessible uh, a water closet. Uh, that's very important, and we will continue to do that. This is a layout, uh, which is not maybe the greatest, but basically on one side we'll have the a men's room with a uh, ADA uh, stall, a regular stall, a urinal, sink, and changing room. And then on the women's room, we're going to have three stalls. This one being the ADA, and then uh, a um, sink and, and a changing table uh, over here, the changing table. And again, the view is a block, so this would be the river side here. So we go to the next side. The uh, will be what we uh, what we have currently have now. We have some. Uh, uh, this is hiding the uh, propane gas, and we have an entrance uh, to the building, uh, the restaurant here. The proposal will bring the, uh, uh, this whole area here will be part of the renovation. That's how it's getting bigger, and that's why we're expanding, so we have more room to put the, the restrooms in. It still will look very similar from the, the river side. Here's a cross section of what it will look like uh, from the parking lot side here. We'll have a, 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 a janitor closet here, and this is just a cross section showing how we are fitting it in. We are taking special concern with regards to the foundation and uh, the retaining wall here and what we need to do with regards to the, um, the restoration and the repairs uh, to the dock and the bulkhead. So that is all being coordinated with this project. Um, the building plans have been completed and uh, uh, the town now has contracted with Milestone Engineering to be our construction manager. Uh, they were selected based on qualifications to do the library project. We're very impressed with them uh, and they're, they are going to help us with this project. Uh, they have come in with a detailed cost estimate and with contingencies, we're at $300,000. In uh, 2018, we authorized $150,000, and that's what uh, we're looking for additional $150,000 this year. Uh, if the voters approve this, uh, the plan is to uh, get everything lined up and not do construction, start construction in, uh, in the fall, right after Labor Day. Uh, it's just too busy down there in the springtime. We were planning on trying to do it in the spring, but with the fishermen and then with the uh, amount of work, finished work that has to be done, uh, it makes more sense if we can start it in the fall and then be ready uh, for use in uh, 2020. Uh, again, this is a very important project. We hope the public will support us. Thank you. Okay, Article 16, Affluent Disposal Pilot Study. To vote to see if the town will raise and appropriate the sum of $500,000 from the lawsuit settlement funds in the Sewer Enterprise Fund for the purpose of completing New Hampshire DES administrative order requirements, including the following activities, engineering, permitting, pilot testing, and wetlands mitigation as required. This is a multiple year appropriation and is intended as a two year appropriation, which will elapse December 31st, 2020, or when the project is completed, whichever occurs first no tax impact, recommended by the Board of Selectmen by a vote of 5 to 0, recommended by the Budget Committee by a vote of 7 to 0. In 2014, the town won its lawsuit against its contract engineer, engineering firm. 
After a study to identify affluent disposal options, it was decided to develop an engineered natural solution. These required funds continue the town's testing and permitting of that pilot engineered natural solution. Dave? Thank you, Linda. <clears throat> yes, uh, this is a very important project, and uh, here's a picture of what it looks like. Uh, this is a few years ago. These are our rapid infiltration basins we normally refer to as RIBs. It would be one, two, and three, and four, and five. Um, the system is designed to take our treated effluent, so this is water that's already been cleaned, and it comes from our award-winning treatment plant, which we have really excellent effluent. Many communities are able to discharge that into rivers. We don't have that option because we only have a lake. So a long time ago, it was decided this water has to go into the ground. Uh, for years, we did spray, and that became saturated, and we had to come up with a new solution. Uh, in 2009, after it was funded, we built this, and we had problems. Uh, as Linda alluded to, uh, there was design problems, and the engineer uh, was found guilty, of, uh, and we were able to uh, win that award, and now we are funding this project uh, to make sure it's done properly. Uh, but we are going much slower, and we are working directly with DES and our consultants to making sure we get it right this time. Um, we've also, uh, working with DES, we've developed administrative order by consent, in, which gave us a reasonable uh, time frame to get this problem done. Um, at the same time, we were also is, is, uh, fixing the disposal problem. We're also working on our, our um, sewer infiltration and inflow problem. The less water we, comes into the system, the less we have to get out. It only makes sense. Um, as we're going forward, we not only selected alternatives, but instead of going right to final construction, we said, let's pilot test this. Let's make sure we get this right. Uh, so we started in 2017 with the ENS systems, which are how we get the water back into the ground and into the brook, and those were successful. We built one. And in 2018, we built infiltration trenches. How do we collect the water before it breaks out and then be able to transmit it back into the ENS system? That is working fine now. It was constructed in um, the uh, summer and fall of 2018. It went online late, and we are now slowly uh, uh, discharging, increasing that discharge. Uh, so at this time, everything looks really good. However, we really need to follow up with it for, uh, and for the rest of this uh, 2019. Um, other aspects of the administrative order have all been completed. And another big thing that we had to do is uh, we had to purchase five acres of land in Tuftonboro uh, because some of the discharge had migrated in that way and there was some restoration needed over there. Uh, so we closed on that property this year. Uh, this is a, an overall diagram of the, uh, this, the lot. And the, again, this is our access road coming up uh, to the top of the site. We're not showing the RIBs or the dis uh, is up here. The 19-mile brook is, is down here. It flows this way and on its way down to 19 Mile Bay. Um, what we have already installed is one of these ENS systems and where we get the water back in the ground. This year we installed some of these red lines here or where we have infiltration trenches. And again, we're monitoring those and we're continuing to, um, to make sure that it's done properly. And, and the other thing we have, we've had where the breakout occurred down in this area and in these areas, there were certain damages. So some of this money is there for the restoration of those wetlands and continuing monitoring. We also haven't done anything yet on this property. That's the property we purchased, about five acres, which basically is this whole area here. And again, after we purchased the property, we were able to install some wells. We're doing the studies. And this money will also go towards um, the continuation of the design and then the permitting uh, for that. In 2019, again, we're going to complete the, uh, the study design and permitting. We're going to continue to monitor and make alterations as necessary. Uh, and then the wetlands rest restorations as required. And then based on all the data we're collecting, we will come up with the final uh, construction uh, drawings and specifications. In 2018, we appropriated $500,000. What we spent was $469,533. That money that we didn't spend goes right back to our, our sewer fund. This year, we're proposing $500,000. We probably will not spend all that, but we have to be there in case there is issues. If something develops or if DES wants us to do something, we want to make sure we had adequate money uh, to make sure we could address those and we keep the project moving. In, uh, once we are done in 1919 with the pilot study, uh, we will come up with documents and we'll be looking at construction in, in 2020 or 2021. Uh, and we'll be looking at just a little over $2 million. Um, we are hopeful that uh, this all will continue and go forward. 
And um, again, everything so far looks really well. Again, in the past, we've been very supportive of these projects. We hope we will again. Thank you. Yeah, I'll be presenting Article 17, Living Museum Feasibility Study and Final Design. The Warren article reads, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $40,000 for the purpose of continuing to conduct a feasibility study on design options to best accommodate both the current Living Museum collection and additions to it by approving and or expanding the existing historic museum building. <clears throat> Continuing work toward final design and construction will include a survey, utility relocation, construction grade drawings, bid package and bidding assistance, engineering and permitting to prepare the project for construction. Said funds will be withdrawn from the 2018 Libby Museum Trust Fund previously established from a gift to the Libby Museum from the Betty Jane Schroff Revo Revocable Trust in the amount of $118,463.01. Uh, there is no tax impact on this project. This is recommended by the Board of Selectmen by a vote of 4 to 0, recommended by the Budget Committee by a vote of 6 to 1, and a majority vote is required. The Lib Museum has a unique opportunity to receive a gift of over 200 North American mammals in museum quality condition. This gift is conditional upon providing museum standards for temperature, light, and moisture control, which the museum doesn't currently provide. The current feasibility study underway is being funded by a grant covering two-thirds of the cost, by a grant covering two-thirds of the cost, and the town one-third of the cost. This phase will allow the town to proceed from the feasibility study to developing construction documents, bid documents, and budget documents. Again, this article will be funded from the Libby Museum Trust Fund, previously established from a gift from the Betty Jane Schroth Revocable Trust. I'd like to ask the voters to support this article, and I'll turn it over to Alana Albee, our director of the Libby Museum. Thank you very much, Brad. Um, a bit of background about the Libby Museum. Many residents in Wolfboro will know of this famous, um, to us, entrance at the front, which actually houses one of the oldest uh, natural history museums in New England and the oldest natural history museum in New Hampshire. It is a rare collection of Dr. Libby's original articles that are over a century old now, as well as many gifts um, of coins and minerals and taxidermied um, animals from New England and other areas of the United States. It has a scenic vista across the lake, which many people enjoy near um, our boat launch, and we get about 3,000 visitors a year. That includes um, many children who take part, several hundred children who take part in our summer programs. The construction of the museum itself was done in 1912 by Dr. Libby himself. He designed the building. It's hollow walled and timber framed without any insulation or heating or temperature control, which is the reason why we're looking at the feasibility of restoration and expansion. It has a field stone foundation and a relatively new metal roof. The floor area is about 5,000 square feet, and we're hoping to utilize the inside so that the external expansion will be quite minimal. Dr. Libby's original collection can no longer be sustained without insulation and heat due mainly to the impact of extreme temperatures, dampness, and UV light. We have an opportunity, as Brad outlined, to receive 200 new North American mammals, um, conditional on having temperature control. And um, a, we have also this year received a very generous bequest from Betty Schroth, who passed away of $118,000. The feasibility itself is underway. We've started looking at the design options, including a potential mezzanine level on the interior of the museum and a small external um, annex. It's still under design. We're also looking at ways in which to insulate and obviously heat and temperature control the building. Phase two, and that's the phase for which we're looking for resources, is to prepare the construction documents, to undertake a survey, and prepare the bid documents for the detailed design. Thank you very much. Dave Bauer is addressing Article 18, Fire Trucks and Apparatus Replacement Capital Reserve Fund. The warrant reads, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of 
$186,000 to be added to the existing fire trucks and apparatus replacement capital reserve fund to be under the custody of the trustee, trustees of trust funds. The selectmen have been designated agents to expend this capital reserve account. The estimated tax rate impact is 0 0.094 per 1,000 of assessed valuation. Uh, recommended unanimously by the Board of Selectmen and unanimously by the Budget Committee. Uh, based on review of needs, we're asking for $186,000 in 2019 to fund the program. The total represents 0.0094% of the value of the buildings and the property we protect, we protect uh, year-round. Tom Zadi will now address the uh, warrant. Thank you. Uh, first of all, we'd like to thank the uh, voters and taxpayers over the years who've supported our request for the uh, money for the capital improvement program. Um, we've been able to, as is the goal of the program, uh, replace our apparatus uh, primarily on a regular basis uh, while it is still functional for us and yet has um, essentially reached the end of its lifespan and allows us to maintain a high level of protection and uh, safety for both the townspeople and our members who uh, drive and operate the vehicles. Um, as we have in the past, we're requesting uh, $186,000 to be put into this fund. Um, that number has held up for several years, and I, and I think it's worth pointing out that although the number hasn't changed, um, in the last several years. This isn't just uh, by rote, throw it in there and, and do it. Every year we review the program, uh, assess it against our needs. Um, we have made changes over the years uh, in terms of what apparatus we've purchased and different types of equipment and so forth. But it's allowed us to maintain that $186,000 figure. Um, so please don't think that it's just kind of an automatic thing. We do reevaluate on an annual basis, make sure that what we anticipate, what we have scheduled, has um, still meets our needs and the needs of the town and uh, will allow us to continue to move forward. As you may be aware, right now we are in the process of replacing our Engine 2. Um, we hope to have it delivered shortly, so you may see it in town. Um, that is part of this program, which we were able to uh, actually um, let the contract la uh, last year in 2018, and the vehicle should be ready for delivery uh, fairly shortly. And at that point, folks will start to see it on the road and see us training on it and so forth. Um, having said that, our next project under the Capital Improvement Program is scheduled for 2021. Um, we'll be replacing, hopefully, our, uh, our 1993 uh, aerial vehicle, which uh, if you've been around for a while or come to our open house, we know you've all seen. Um, it is a 1993. The uh, um, cost of uh, repairs and uh, maintenance and so forth has crept up, and it is on the schedule, uh, hopefully, to be replaced. And, and 2021. After that, we, we go to 2024 um, when we hopefully will replace our engine three. Um, again, it uh, allows us to maintain um, a regular replacement schedule and balance the need for up to date and current apparatus with, with the costs involved. As far as um, the future, um, we do have uh, a routine schedule, and we would encourage anyone um, who wants to see what's on the agenda further out, uh, contact uh, Chief Pinio or myself, and we'd be happy to share it. Um, but as of right now, um, again, we, we hope to, uh, uh, to be successful, asking again for $186,000 uh, at town meeting in 2019. Thank you. I'll be uh, presenting Article 19, which reads Public Works Vehicles and Equipment Capital Reserve Fund. Uh, and the Warren article reads as follows. To see if the town will vote to raise to appropriate the sum of $170,000 to be added to the existing Public Works Vehicles and Equipment Capital Reserve Fund to be under the custody of the trustees of the trust funds. 
The selectmen have been designated as agents to expend this capital reserve fund. Estimated tax rate impact for 2019 is 8.6 cents per thousand dollars of assessed valuation. This is recommended by the Board of Selectmen by a vote of 4 to 0 and recommended by the Budget Committee by a vote of 6 to 1. A majority vote is required. Again, the Public Works Department has developed a long-term spreadsheet showing the costs and time frame for the replacement of its vehicles and equipment. This capital reserve approach allows the department to fund its purchases while holding a steady impact on the tax rate. I'd like to ask all the voters to support this article, and I'll turn it over to Dave Ford for further details. Thank you, Brad. Um, this is, uh, again, an ongoing situation. How do we take care of our roads? How do we rebuild? How do we remove the snow? We have to have vehicles, and we have very good vehicles, and we have a very good staff that takes care of those. Uh, we maintain the public work fee. This cap reserve fund is set up so we can maintain that fleet without spiking the tax rate. We have over $3 million of equipment in, in our uh, inventory. Um, and I got to say something that maybe we haven't done in the past. We should kudos to John Burt. John Burt has been around for a while. He's on the budget committee and has been our treasurer. He was the one that set this up many years ago. And, and kudos to him because it was a great idea, and I'm going to explain why it's help, helped us in many cases. Uh, we set up the cap reserve fund with the idea that over time we can continue and sustain itself with the funding that we've been proposed. Uh, we have a detailed inventory of all the vehicles and equipment, and this fund covers only the highway vehicles and the solid waste vehicles and equipment. Uh, in 2019, we are planning on replacing the solid waste uh, unit number seven, which is a 2004 GMC pickup truck and uh, we are looking at replacing our uh, 1991 dresser front end loader. Uh, both of those have given us many years and uh, time to uh, be uh, retired. Um, the, the cost, what we're asking to be put into the fund is $170,000, which has been, we've kind of flatlined it for the last three years. Um, in, again, in, one of the things I want to talk about is what happens when we have an emergency. Uh, and when I'm juggling and trying to see which vehicles we're replacing, we had uh, extended the useful life of our uh, grader uh, to 25 years. And by pushing that out, we were really on the edge. And uh, this past year, unfortunately, we had some major problems with it. And it was determined at that point we could not fix it because it would have been good money after bad. Uh, luckily, we had a balance uh, when each year in, in, in the fiscal year uh, 2018, uh, we had certain purchases and we were going to be carrying a, a certain balance at the end of the year as we were building up for future years. Uh, when the grader went down, uh, we had detailed discussions with the Board of Selectmen and looked at the possibility of buying a used machine to be able to keep us going for another 10 years <clears throat> until we can buy a newer grader. Uh, they were acceptable to that. We went out and looked at a lot of different graders. We were able to get a, a, a grader with a trade-in from the old one for $80,000. If we did not have this cap reserve fund, which is under the purview of the Board of Selectmen, we would have been without a grader for a long period of time, and we would be looking for a major purchase this year. Um, again, these capital reserve funds are great financing. It's a great uh, policy we have. And again, we can see now we've been able to adjust uh, purchases going down line. In 2019, again, we are going to be purchasing about $175,000 worth of equipment, and we will be... Um, still having money balance going forward. And as we go forward, uh, the balance is always in the positive, and uh, it's an uh, excellent tool that we have. The uh, voters have been very kind to us, and again, we do appreciate that. Uh, and again, hopefully you will support us again uh, this year. Thank you. Article 20, Wastewater Treatment Plant Capital Reserve Fund to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $125,000 to be deposited in the existing wastewater treatment plant capital reserve fund. Under the custody of the trustees of trust funds, the Board of Selectmen, has been, Selectmen have been designated as the agents to expend this capital reserve fund. Estimated tax rate impact 2019.063 of assessed value recommended by the Board of Selectmen by a vote of 4 to 0 recommended by the Budget Committee by a vote of 6 to 1 majority vote required this addition of $125,000 to the wastewater treatment plant capital reserve will provide the funds needed to upgrade the wastewater treatment plant to extend its useful life and with that I will turn it over to Dave Ford thank you Linda 
this again another one of the capital reserve funds which has really uh, really helped the uh, the town in terms of maintaining and upgrading our infrastructure without spiking the tax rack our wastewater treatment plant is 40 plus years old um, in 2007 uh, we were, it was recommended to replace it with a 14 million dollar new plant uh, at that time, we had just bonded the money uh, over $8 million to, uh, to take care of our effluent disposal problem, and it was not practical for us to do uh, that kind of project. Uh, so we looked, and we became a little Yankee, a little tight, and we did some minor upgrades in uh, <clears throat> 2007 8 195000 which improved the process, and we tried out some things that really worked well for us. In 2010, we were able to get some grant money, and we were able to do another project for 780000 and then in 2012, we did a project for 180,000. Still, we got to remember, we're still dealing with a 40-year-old building. Most of those projects did not deal with the actual core of the building. And at that time, we went to the selectmen and we just set up a million-dollar capital reserve fund, which would be funded $125,000 a year for eight years. And we developed an inventory of what was most critical uh, to get done. The, uh, what happened, again, uh, we prioritized those improvements. But we have been flexible, and this is what's nice about the Cap Reserve Fund, because we're able to uh, make some changes. In 2015, there was a grant available for generators for wastewater treatment plants. We were able to get an $80,000 grant. Now, the, the generator had to get replaced. It was set to be done in about four years, but because we could get the grant, it only made sense to move that up the priority list. And because we had the Cap Reserve Fund, we had the matching money, we were able to jump on it, and we were able to get that done. In 2016, we started engineering for the sludge storage building, uh, buried pipes, and uh, that project is what we're working on now. Um, the um, inventory of projects, so these are all the projects we had to get done. In 2018, we are working on the, the things that were designed in 17, and here we can see uh, we had a, actually we had a problem with insurance. Uh, we had one of our buildings get damaged, and we were able to get an insurance check of $50,000. That goes into the capital reserve fund to help offset those costs. In 2018, we were working on a sludge building, aeration stuff, and um, aeration piping. Part of this, we had done an energy uh, audit, and we were able to get an energy conservation measure rebate, and so we will be seeing a check for over $22,000, and we hope the Suckman will allow that to go back into that fund so we can, again, continue to put the money back in. With this, in 2019, we're proposing to do electrical wiring upgrade. Again, the building now being 40-plus years old, it's time to be proactive, not wait till things start breaking down on us. We also will be doing some additional engineering on our effluent pumps, and we feel that in the following years, uh, those will be ready to go out to bid. Again, <clears throat> we are doing the best we can, being really Yankee with this treatment plant. I think, uh, again, we should also point out that this plant, uh, due to its, uh, the uh, operators who are uh, contract operators with Wooden Current, do a great job of maintaining the facility. Uh, we, we won the New Hampshire Wastewater Treatment Plant of the Year in 2016. And again, it's not because it's, we spent millions of dollars, it's because we work hard and we're being Yankee, and because we set up this fund to help take care of critical items when they do come up. Again, thank you so much for supporting us in the past, and hopefully you'll support us again. Uh, hello, I'm Paul O'Brien, and I'm here to speak about Article 21, the establishment of a dispatch equipment capital reserve fund. The article reads, to see if the, the town will raise and appropriate the sum of $102,000 to establish a dispatch equipment capital reserve fund for the purpose of replacement of the dispatch console or other related equipment installation and related expenses. Said fund uh, shall be under the custody of the trustee of the trust funds. Furthermore, to authorize the Board of Selectmen as agents to expend from this capital reserve fund. The estimated tax impact for 2019 is 0.052 per $1,000 of assessed valuation. This has been recommended uh, by the selectmen on a, vo on a vote of 4 to 0. It's also been recommended by the Budget Committee uh, by a vote of 7 to 0. And the Police Commission, a majority vote uh, of the town is required for this, uh, uh, for this Capital Reserve Fund to pass. I'll now turn it over to Chief Rondo, who can further explain uh, what we need to be doing here. Chief? Thank you, sir. Uh, I am uh, Chief Rondo with the Wolfboro Police Department. And uh, in 2017, we were informed by our service provider that uh, this unit was antiquated and uh, in need of replacement. The unit approx is approximately uh, 15 years old and went into service in 2003. 
Uh, presently, the system is no longer supported. Repair parts are no longer available. Uh, and uh, it is questionable as to how long updates, uh, that software updates uh, from the manufacturer will, will continue to be written to support this system. If this system fails now, a new system would have to be purchased. Uh, the systems are approximately $350,000. Um, though this uh, replacement is tentatively scheduled to coincide with the public safety building, the two are not connected. The uh, laying aside $102,000 uh, for, for the next four years would allow us to do a few things. One of the things it would allow us to do uh, if the dispatch console were to fail within the next few years is to help defray the cost of a purchased item. Dispatch, uh, as, as uh, you folks know, uh, dispatch is for more than just uh, police, fire, and EMS. They also dispatch for electric. They dispatch for public works. They uh, answer the calls after hours for a number of agencies. So it is truly Wolfboro Central Dispatch. They dispatch for the entire town. So this system, if it were to fail and were not be able to be replaced quickly, would have a significant impact on, on the lives of all the citizens within town. Um, the additional uh, monies raised after the $350,000 would, would be to uh, replace the antennas, the connectors, pay for the installation, deinstallation uh, of the uh, old and new systems, and to uh, cover any labor costs inherent with, with that project. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, if you have any further questions, I please uh, don't hesitate to contact me uh, at the Wolfboro Police Department or my executive officer, Captain Mark Libby. Thank you very much for your support. I truly appreciate it. Okay, this is Article 22, uh, Cary Beach Water Quality Study. The article reads, to see whether the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $50,000 for the purpose of studying, engineering, and permitting a solution to environmental concerns related to water quality at Cary Beach. This will be a non-lapsing warrant article and will not lapse until the project is complete or until December 31, 2024, whichever occurs first. The estimated impact uh, on the 2019 tax rate is 0.025 uh, per $1,000 of assessed valuation. This is recommended by your Board of Selectmen on a vote of 5 to 0. It's also recommended by the Budget Committee on a vote of 6 to 1. I'll now turn it over to Dave Ford for him to explain what this environmental concern is and how we intend to deal with it. Dave? Thank you, Paul. Yes, this is probably the most important warrant article we have to discuss. Um, the impacts of stormwater pollution are sometimes are unseen. Unfortunately, uh, for years, development up off of Forest Road on Port Wed uh, in the uh, different subdivisions coming down Forest Road have led to increased runoff. Uh, that runoff has been untreated and has created erosion. The erosion has found its way into Winter Harbor. And this year, with this picture here, it may, this is a, a, a tin pan which is showing these little dots. Each one of these little dots is a colony of bacteria, and unfortunately it's cyanobacteria. This is a significant uh, environmental issue. Uh, these bacteria live in, in the sediment, and when they are fed uh, nutrients like phosphorus and nitrogen, uh, they, and they get the right conditions with sunlight, uh, they can grow, and they can uh, pollute our waters. This year we had an outbreak. Uh, and another thing that we understand with this, this bacteria, when it dies, it can be uh, toxic. So it's very dangerous and it's something that uh, we do need to address. Um, the Cary Beach parking lot, which is the end of, of the Winter Harbor, and here's on a rainstorm, we can see the amount of runoff. This is a gravel parking lot with no drainage system, uh, has no stormwater treatment. And uh, it is pretty clear what would happen when we get the rain? The rain just comes down and forms and f creates a little bit of a creek and then heading out to the beach and it ends up right in that. And there is our winter harbor. So one of the major contributors to our stormwater problem is Cary Beach. And it was identified that we need to do something. And again, we were a little bit lax this uh, late August when the uh, cyanobacteria outbreak occurred. I think it caught us all by surprise. And I think uh, to the... Uh, tribute to the selectmen. We are attacking this problem not only here. We are, like I said, we have specific projects on Partridge Road under the road project. We're going to spend $50,000 installing stormwater treatment up there, which is upslope. We're going to do the study 
This one here particularly, we are um, <clears throat> concerned about, again, Kerry Beach right down here, but we are going to be looking at the whole area. What else is uh, going on there? We have a septic system for the beach, and we are going to be looking at that septic system. Should it be upgraded? Uh, should we put a sewage pump station in and pump it all the way up to North Main Street? We will also be looking at the area, other uh, forms, uh, areas that may be contributing excessive nutrients <clears throat> to, the, um, to the water. Again, this is a watershed problem. So when we look at the blue line here, that outlines the whole watershed. We're going to discuss in another area uh, studies that are ongoing that we're also going to be looking for dev other sources of these pollutions. We do know White Gate Lane, which comes out here, and uh, that is an area that is now being negatively impacted by the subdivisions above. And on Partridge Drive, this is where we're going to be installing the um, uh, stormwater treatment systems to help mitigate the stormwater, to help mitigate what's going in, in the brook there. This warrant article is more specific about Cary Beach and what we can do there. Um, like I said, the problem, stormwater surface runoff uh, that carries sediment and pollutants to the lake. And again, I'm kind of, you know, in the old days, we didn't worry about stormwater. Our goal was to get the water away from the road as quick as possible, and when it went to a brook, a river, or a lake, we thought our job was done. We have realized over the last 20 years that it's not done. It has become a major problem for uh, all communities, and specifically Wolfboro, where our natural resources are so important to us. We need to do something, and this is a good start. We are going to, uh, again, these excessive nutrients have created the cyanobacteria outbreaks. Hopefully we'll never see that again. The conditions were just right, but we have to be proactive. These are health concerns also. We potentially could have closed the beach, and we, when, if this happens again, we may uh, put out warnings to limit the water use there. Also, anyone who lives in this area should also be aware. Uh, people think that they can drink lake water, that it's not harmful, and, and you know, most times of the year it's crystal clear you might think that. Uh, as a public uh, official, I would always tell you never drink untreated water. If you are and you think you can boil water and you think you're safe there, if you boil water with cyanobacteria on it, all that does is kill the bacteria and it releases the toxins. And if you are uh, in that community, elderly or young or have certain... Uh, uh, health issues, you could be really taking a risk there. So be very careful with that. And again, we are uh, trying to be very proactive here. So in 2019, well, we are proposing this uh, detailed engineering study uh, to look at the parking lot and the septic system in this area specifically around Kerry Beach so that we can come up with um, different alternatives, which we'll be discussing with the selectmen, and working to uh, <clears throat> determine the cost for construction improvements in 2020 possibly getting grants also to help us defray those costs. So again, this is our schedule, 2019 to complete that study, and 2020 to uh, begin construction. Again, very critical project, and we're hopeful that you'll be supportive. If anyone has any questions on that, we'd be more than happy to answer those. And also, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about this in, in another Warren article that's a little bit further. Thank you. Article 23, Building Maintenance Capital Reserve Fund. See if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $50,000 you deposited in the existing Building Maintenance Capital Reserve Fund, previously established for the purpose of making needed repairs and performing needed maintenance to the town's building facilities. Said fund is under the custody of the trustee of trust funds. The selectmen have been designated as agents to expand, expend funds in this capital reserve fund. Estimated tax rate impact 2019.025 per thousand assessed valuation. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen by a vote of 4 to 0. Recommended by the Budget Committee with a vote of 6 to 1. Majority vote required. And we'll turn this over to David Ford. Thank you, David. <clears throat> this is another one of our very important capital reserve funds. Again, our problem is we own 23 buildings, and that, that does not include buildings owned by the Enterprise Fund, whether it's the Electric Department, Water Department, or Abenaki. These buildings range in age from 20, 30, to 100 years old. Uh, we do our best to maintain these buildings, but you never know when something significant can happen. This Cap Reserve Fund is to help cover those emergencies and also to develop a long-term plan in which we can plan on upgrades of roofs and heating systems that may be required. So we created this Cap Reserve Fund in 2016 and we have been putting certain monies in each year. 
Uh, in 2018, we had started doing the assessment and we ran into some problems, uh, partly because of uh, workload in my department, we didn't get to it, and partly because the consultant we were using, we were not happy with the end product. As a result, we put that project on hold, yet we still need to take care of uh, the buildings. Uh, so we are going to uh, restart that in 2019 and get that inventory uh, completed and at the same time develop the cost to repair or replace uh, the different items within each of the buildings. And also we need to prioritize that, which is most important, and also be able to deal still with an emergency when something comes up unexpected. Again, uh, in 2016 we started off with 30000 17 was 50000 Last year we put 75000 This year, as the selectmen are trying to balance the budget, we, uh, we, we knocked it down a little bit. doesn't mean it wasn't as important. It was just trying to balance where we are with our overall capital money. We are proposing 50000 in 2019. Uh, things that new, need to get done, again, this fund is under the purview of the Board of Selectmen. We will be discussing these items with them and making sure uh, the railroad station, it's a beautiful old building which was painted about 10 years ago. It is indeed now to be scraped and painted again. Uh, the town hall, we have some issues with dehumidification in the basement and we are looking at energy conservation measures. And then also uh, to develop and uh, finalize the, all the building inventory and, uh, and the asset management plan. <clears throat> These are things that would be funded by this project. Again, this is a very important uh, project. It is one, again, I wish we would have all the detail first, which we could tell you where all the 23 buildings are and all the things that are needed. But hopefully you can understand there's a lot there. And I can tell you that this money will be well used. It's, it's, being, uh, it's, and it, and it's being, again, at the purview of the selectmen. We have to prove that we need the money and, it, and we'll be projects will be brought to them first uh, before and to get authorization before we spend any of this money. Thank you for your support. This is Dave Bowers addressing Article 24, the Abenaki Ski Area Capital Reserve Fund. The article reads, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $16,750 to be added to the Abenaki Ski Area Capital Reserve Fund previously established for the pur purpose of purchasing or repairing snowmaking equipment, the groomer, light poles, and mechanical, electrical, and safety equipment related to the Abenaki Ski Area. Said fund is under the custody of the Trustee of Trust Funds. The selectmen have been designated as agents to expend funds in this Capital Reserve Fund. This uh, the estimated uh, rate tax imp uh, implant is uh, 0 0.008 per 1,000 of assessed valuation, which actually is negligible. The Board of Selectmen have unanimously approved it and the Budget Committee has approved it by a vote of 6 to 1. I now turn it over to Christine Collins, manager of the Abenaki area. Thanks. Uh, Abenaki is in its 83rd season, so the lodge was um, constructed in 1940. We actually just got a new one built in 2015. So if you have not been to Abenaki Ski Area, you have to come over. We still have that rope toe that everybody loves. It is a struggle for some of the adults. Um, kids are enjoying it a little bit more than the adults, but the lodge is beautiful and it's a great place to just sit. We have beautiful windows where you can just watch your children ski and enjoy it. Um, the lodge actually has been a four season resort so Abenaki has grown quite a bit. If you've gone skiing a long time ago you need to come back and see what we have to offer. Uh, we have plenty of um, activities through the summer and the winter and this Capital Reserve actually has helped us maintain this um, ski area and we've had constant, I don't know if you've seen Powder Magazine and Ski New Hampshire, um, they have constantly reached out to me just to talk about the oldest uh, winter ski area in North America. So it's pretty exciting and it's in your backyard. So I hope to see you on the slopes this season and please help um, fund this for us. Thank you so much. Okay, Article 25, Public Safety Building Capital Reserve Fund. It reads, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $20,000 to be placed in the Public Safety Building Capital Reserve Fund, previously established in 2001 for the purpose of acquisition of property, architectural and engineering fees, rehabilitation of property, construction or reconstruction of property related to the Public Safety Building. Estimated tax rate impact, 2019, 0.010 per thousand. 
recommended by the Board of Selectmen by a vote of four to zero, not recommended by the Budget Committee by a vote of five to two. Majority vote required. I'm going to turn this over to the Chief at this point. Thank you, Dave. Over 2018, um, the Fire Department, in conjunction with the Police Department, reached out, put out RFPs for a feasibility study of the existing building. Through that process, we evaluated three different plans for the public safety building. It needs to be stressed that the scope of that project was to develop a partial on that piece of land um, that would accommodate fire rescue, police, and central dispatch. Um, we had, of the three different projects, one was a complete teardown um, and reconstruction. One was a phased project, which was the best project of the bunch, and the other was a another teardown. Um, so one of the things that we discussed as a body was moving forward into 2019, should we evaluate other sites? Um, the public safety building was built in 1974. Um, there are some struggles with that building. It served us well. Uh, however, um, we're planning for redesign, reconstruction, moving in the future. Um, so the next phase is to look and see is the existing site the best site for the building or do we have other pieces of property out there which may offer better services to you, the citizens. So going forward, we're going to be looking at some sites, test fitting our space needs, which we built last year, and hopefully be able to come forward to the town next year with a final report so that we can begin the planning process of a new public safety building um, and be prepared to answer all the questions going forward. Should you have any questions regarding the existing public safety building, the space needs assessment, um, please feel free to reach out to myself at the fire station. You can reach out to Deputy Chief Zotti or you can reach out to anybody at the police department. Chief Rondo or Captain Libby should be able to help you. Thank you very much and we look forward to your vote. Article 26, Water Quality Improvements, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $50,000 for the purpose of providing matching funds for New Hampshire Department of Environmental Service, Section 319, Watershed Assistant Grant, Grants for Winter Harbor, a Section 319 grant for the Lake Wentworth Watershed for watershed education and water quality testing. Ex estimated tax rate impact 2019.025 per thousand of assessed value. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen 5 to 0. Recommended by the Budget Committee 5 to 0. Majority vote required. A portion of the mo uh, funds requested will go towards educating the public on the best management uh, practices to help address runoff into the town's water bodies, to address water quality, and to help minimize the chances of additional cyano cyanobacteria outbreaks. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Dave Ford. Thank you, Linda. Uh, this, again, is probably one of the most important articles we have, as discussed before. We're looking at this picture again. This is a picture of cyanobacteria that was blooming this year in uh, Winter Harbor. Again, just to go over, the watershed is all the way <coughs> into uh, Mirror Lake, actually empties into Winter Harbor and, and comes out, out to the bay this way. We have a significant problem that there's really no flushing activity. Mirror Lake has a big watershed that flows out and flushes that part, but there is no uh, brooks or anything significant flushing. So this water is kind of stuck here. There are a few springs and there are some deep waters in the middle. But the Winter Harbor is a really, uh, 
an area that is sensitive to this. And I think this year we found out what could happen when, when problems go un, unattended to. Um, so we are very uh, concerned. And uh, this, in 2018, the town of Tuftonboro applied for and did receive a 319 grant. They are studying their portion of Winter Harbor, but we are now going to join that. Part of the funds here would be to help join and can, can do more detail of our part of that watershed. As we say, the problem is our concern over surface water. And while we're specifically looking at Winter Harbor, we also need to look at all our watersheds. Uh, what happens is the residential development in these watersheds, when we do these subdivisions that were done back in the 70s and 80s, we weren't, did not realize the impact of the cookie cutter subdivisions, uh, the impervious services, and the continuation of those. When those get all built out, they have the negative impacts. Our critical re re water resources, Lake Wentworth and Crescent Lake. And again, the Lake Wentworth Association has done a fine job of staying on top of that and working hard. Lake Winnipesaukee, which our areas are, the Winter Harbor, Jockey Cove, Wolfboro Bay, and South Wolfboro, are all critical resources for us. And we have now got to put our focus on those areas as we have done with Lake Wentworth. And also, Rust Pond is also critical. We do have watershed management plans for Lake Wentworth, Crescent Lake, and Rust Pond, but we do not have for the other aspects of Winnipesaukee. This is, uh, part of this money is going to be to help us uh, get in on that. The important things, too, about, to understand about 319 grants, you have to have a watershed management plan first before you can apply for grants. So we can't apply for grants, for instance, uh, the BMPs we want to do on Partridge Drive, we couldn't, because we didn't have a watershed management plan, uh, we went after different grants for wetlands mitigation, we didn't get it. Uh, once this plan gets done, it allow us, opens up the door for uh, more um, grant money. So our solution, again, is the installation of BMPs, which we said we're going to fund with the road money, $50,000. Um, we want to fund the watershed management plan. Uh, the, and the Board of Selectmen formed a specific um, committee, the Cyanobacteria Committee, and uh, we are meeting on a regular basis every month. Our objectives are, again, assessment, find out how bad the problem is and, and understanding the problem when it does occur, uh, determining corrective actions, which we have already doing here, but there's going to be more, and most importantly, education. Everyone that's in that watershed, and I want to go back to that one second, just so we can, I'd like to go back to this area here, because we talk about education. Everyone in this watershed, from North Main Street, Port Wedland, Key Waden, all these areas, you have an important role. You can be part of the problem and you can be part of the solution. When we are looking at these best management practices, being careful not to rake your leaves into the drainage ditch, uh, being careful that if you're creating impervious service, maybe you can create infiltration trenches. Uh, nowadays, when we uh, come through um, any types of uh, new buildings, we are encouraging uh, landscaping for water quality. And specifically, if you own property anywhere along these waterfronts, you are on the you are going to receive the benefit of clean water, and you're going to see the disadvantage if we don't clean up this water. And that goes to both sides. Also, on the uh, Wolfboro next side, we have to be very careful. And our goal, again, in terms of this project, will be to do an education, which will be putting out things on the newspaper, uh, on the web page, and possibly mailers, educating people to understand if you're in this watershed, you have a direct responsibility to help us maintain it and to improve it. And again, I just want to break down the cost on this. Uh, so we, uh, the, it's a $50,000 warrant article, and we are looking at 15000 is going to go for matching Winter Harbor specifically, which is an ongoing. 15000 going to Lake Wentworth, which they're in the phase three. They're actually installing, so this is going to go for actually constructing BMPs, and it is a match money which from a grant already. $10,000 is going to go to education, which we talk about flyers and a campaign to get the word out there, what you should and should not be doing. And also $10,000 so that we can do uh, testing and sampling so we can be ahead of the game. Last year, we think we got caught. We probably did not have a, a, a uh, we had a situation which we probably should have been ahead of it a little better. So we want to be, uh, if the problem does occur again, we want to be on the forefront, making sure the public is aware and that we, um, if we have to close the beach, we'd rather be safe than sorry. Again, this is a very important project and we really uh, appreciate the support of the taxpayers on this one. Thank you. Article 27, ask me contract agreement to see if the town will vote to approve the cost items included in the collective bargaining agreement reached between the Board of Selectmen 
and local number 534 of the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, AFSCME, which calls for the following increases in salaries and benefits at the current staffing levels. 2019 wages 44,569, benefits 6,142 for a total of 50,711. And further to raise and appropriate the sum of $50,711 for the upcoming physical year, such sum representing the additional costs attributed to the increase in wages and benefits over those of the appropriation at current staffing levels paid in the prior physical year. Estimated tax rate impact is 0 0.026 per thousand. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen on a vote of 5 to 0. Recommended by the Budget Committee by a vote of 5 to 2. Majority vote required. Hi, Paul O'Brien again. I'm here to talk about Article 28, the Police Union Contract Agreement. This is a multi-year agreement uh, that has been struck between the town and the uh, police union. And see, the article reads as follows. To see if the town will vote to approve the cost items included in the collective bargaining agreement reached between the town and Local 29 of the New England Police Benevolent Association, which calls for the following increases in wages and benefits at current staffing levels. In year 2019, the estimated wage increase will be $45,681. The benefit increase is estimated to be $10,179 for a total increase in 2019 of $55,860. In the year 2020, the wage increase will be $48,649, benefit increase of $11,021, total increase in year 2020, $59,670. In year 2021, uh, that was 2020, my apologies. In year 2021, wages will increase, wages will be $49,654. Benefits will be $15,333 for a total 2021 of $64,987. In year 2022, wages will be $47,173, benefits $14,418 for a total in year 2022 of $61,590. And to further raise and appropriate the sum of $55,860 for the upcoming fiscal year, such sum representing the additional costs attributable to the increase in wages and the benefits over those of the appropriation at current staff levels paid in the prior fiscal year. The estimated tax in, uh, impact for 2019 is 0.028 cents per thousand of assessed valuation. This is recommended by your Board of Selectmen on a vote of 5 to 0. It's also been recommended by the Budget Committee by a vote of 4 to 3. A majority vote of the citizens is required for this Warren article to pass. Okay, Article 29 uh, is a special detailed fund. The Warren article reads as follows. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of uh, $52,721, which represents a portion of the accumulated revenue in the special detail revolving fund, which was, which was created by Article 23 back in 2006, which has been allowed to accumulate uh, from special fund details in prior years. Said appropriation will be used to purchase a replacement cruiser and to allow the Board of Selectmen to dispose of the existing cruiser by sale or trade-in, whichever is in the best interest of the town. There will be no impact on, on your taxes uh, uh, if you approve this article. This has been recommended by the Board of Selectmen on a vote of 5 to 0. It has also been recommended by the Budget Committee on a vote of 7 to 0. A majority vote of you is required for this Warren article to pass. Thank you, sir. Um, so the, uh, the bottom line to this is that uh, uh, this is uh, zero impact on the tax base and allows the Wilford Police Department to achieve uh, a new vehicle without uh, having any impact on the, uh, on the town's taxes whatsoever. 
Um, over the years, the, the monies have accumulated in the police special uh, detail account. So this is the, uh, the police department and uh, the Board of Selectmen and Police Commission asking permission of the uh, taxpayers to go ahead and move that money uh, from that account, which is already readily available uh, and is essentially surplus uh, dollars. And these are not uh, tax dollars now. These are surplus dollars in this account uh, to go ahead and use that money to purchase a, uh, a new replacement cruiser. Um, I had two cruisers fail uh, in 2018. I have another two cruisers that are expected to fail due to uh, mechanical and uh, rust issues this year. Uh, so this is something that the Wolfboro Police Department desperately needs in order to make sure that we have a fleet of vehicles on the road capable of getting uh, to calls for service. Um, Thank you very much uh, for your support, and uh, I truly appreciate it. If you have any questions on this uh, warrant article or, or other police warrant articles, please don't hesitate to contact me or my executive officer, Captain Mark Levy. Thank you very much. I want to thank everybody for turning in tonight and watching this program, and I want to thank uh, Community Television for uh, providing us with the space and opportunity to speak to the public. Um, I would like to remind you again, February 5th, 7 p.m., Great Hall at the Town Hall for the Deliberative Session, and March 12th, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m., voting um, at the Town Hall Great Hall. We're looking forward to seeing all you on voting day and hoping that you will support our Warren articles. Thank you. <laughs>